I am here today. <laughs> this is a better smile. Yeah, like, this is it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> <say it. laughs> I'm here today, man, with a, whether I like it or not, somebody who's been a very integral part of my childhood and my uh, my journey on television and my career. Nah, um, really, man, over time, he, he has become somewhat of a little brother to me, even though it didn't start that way. That's my brother very Jermaine true. Crawford. Yo. You might know him as Dookie from The Wire. Yo. You might know him as, uh, what was your name on? Uh, oh. We Run the City? Oh, Jaquan Dixon, Officer Dixon. Officer Dixon? Yeah. Um, yeah, man. How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm happy to be here. It's good to man, see you. It's good to see you too, bro. Good to see you, man. Always good to see you. <laughs> so, you moved to LA how long ago? Ah, man. It's been four years now. Four years. I was so, in New oh, so York for a little bit. You're LA now. That's like I'm LA now. You're, you're, I just like, got my driver's license. Oh, you got the license, the yeah. official license. I'm yeah. Cali now. Yeah. <laughs> so wait, so you you were in a uh, let people know you were in Maryland. I was in Maryland. You were born course. and raised in PG, right? Born and raised in PG County, Prince yeah. George's County. You can tell people, of course, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I used to say I was from DC. My show used to give me the hardest time. He's like, "You're not from DC. You're from Maryland." Yeah, because yeah, yeah. you're, <laughs> <and, laughs> you're not from DC. <laughs> just I'm just birth certificate. Speaking. I'm from, the, but I am from the DMV. So, but anyway, but but um, yeah. So, uh, I'm from PG County. Of course, you know, uh, I was just doing like a lot of musical theater. This opportunity for this show that I've never heard about came, and I just did my best on the audition. One thing came to another. I was, you know, driving to work in Baltimore every day. Uh, I stayed in Baltimore, was able to do certain gigs living in Baltimore. Then I moved to New York, took it one step higher. So uh, you were just, okay. So you were just staying. In P- did you ever move like move out in living in Baltimore? Or it didn't make sense. You were like, mm-hmm. if I'm moving, I'm moving. I stay with my parents, man. No, I because <laughs> like unless you're gonna go to. Like you said, like that's the brand you say to go to New York. Or yeah, whatever. I was just yeah. wondering because I know when I met you, you're from PG Maryland, of and uh, yeah, and you you didn't move to New York to what? When did you move to New York? I moved out when I was 24. I remember that. Okay. So it, it's it's been almost like about seven years coming up. So you know, I I hit the ceiling in Maryland. Nah, I know what you mean. It yeah. was only so much I could do in Maryland. Mm-hmm. You know, I gave it my I gave it my all. <laughs> <laughs> I gave it my goddamn all. You said I, g- I gave it the old college try. <laughs> I did. I yeah. did. I even did a semester at a community college in PG Community College. I did it. I did. I tried. I tried. Yeah. Not for you. And then I was like, Nah, man, I got to take it a step higher. Went to New York. Hold the mic a little bit closer. My bad. I went to New York. Make, make my job. Make my job a little easier. <laughs> for sure. So I went How to New York. Like New York. New York was cool. New York was inspiring. I got a lot of inspiration um that kind of got me to where i am yeah yeah, i mean exactly of course no but for real though like it just gave me a lot of stories that i'm telling today Mm. you know i lived through a lot of things that i'm now able to write about and kind of share with the world so um new york was that that stomping ground but i feel like even with new york for what i really wanted to do um i kind of not hit a ceiling but I knew to do what I really wanted to do, yeah. I had to I had to bring it to California. So um, it's been four very interesting, t- <laughs> it, tough years, man. Those first two years were like a nightmare, oh, yeah. man. No. You, well, I, yeah, you're finding your community. You're finding, I mean, you're, you're also fi- career shit. You're finding yeah, I was about to say finding a job. Yeah. Nigga. <laughs> finding a job, nigga. <laughs> you're finding a job. <laughs> but, no, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, bro, it's a lot. And also for us as creatives, too, it's like yeah. the type of job we want, too, right? Yeah. It's not just like finding the first. For sure. Op- you know what I mean? Opportunity. Because sure. across- you know, like, also just think of people don't understand that. Just being a part of uh, something or doing things at a, well, uh, okay, I got you now. Yeah, be good. Being, a, being a part of something and um, doing things at a young age, people don't understand. Me and Cleo were talking about this. Mm-hmm. He was just like, man, he was like, he was like, people, people didn't realize every day I left my house, somebody was going to recognize me Very from true. the outside world. Same. Like, it was, exactly. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah. Nigga, I know. Yeah, and it's yeah, just yeah. like, he was like, that's not a normal way to live. It's nah. not a normal way also for, uh, especially a child to grow up expecting everything to roll into the way that it does. Yeah, bro. You no, know, bro, trust me, I know. And it's, 
we even discussed like that's why it's so cool. Um, we'll get into like how you got into writing, but mm-hmm. how you find your own path. Like you know, because if you don't find your own path, it's not like niggas are out here just waiting trying to handing it to handing you, handing it to you, or or <laughs> even just setting it up. Like people expect, yeah. like oh, like you've done this one thing, like you're. Uh, set you're for set. life yeah, yeah, like, yeah, what? Yeah. what would you be why do i see you if i go somewhere and i'm supposed to be working somewhere or doing like no but it's not it's but not that but but <clears throat> in a way it's almost kind of true but it's not it's a set for life where it it it's opened a door and exposed you in a way to now have that platform to kind of do something else i mean set for life like you know you know what I mean? It's yes and no. It's you know, yes and no. When people say when people say set for life, I like to look at it more as like I wouldn't say set for life. It's that's what y'all think, but it's more of like it's an eye opener. Yeah. That's what how I look at every situation I've ever had. It's like, mm-hmm. oh no, it's an eye opener. Like mm-hmm. I know what it's like to do these things. Yeah. I've been there, I've seen this, I've done so now I know where I need to get back to. Yeah. Or I know where I need to get back to on my own terms. Yeah. That's all that is. Most yeah. people never see these things. Like, yeah. we were talking about succession. It's like, yeah, if you watch a show like that, like, that's the only time you're going to see, like, what it's like being around a billionaire. Yeah. For, what, probably over 90% of the population. Yeah. Whereas, for some of us, when you get into these rooms and you're, oh, <laughs> shit, it looks like this. That's cool. Oh, that's how they do that? Ah, oh, man. And you take that back with you to the mm-hmm. learning table, mm-hmm. and you go build whatever the fuck you're trying to mm-hmm. do, you know? But. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people don't understand also just like, you know, just because you've done one job, it's it's not a, it's not, you know, I feel like the average job, as you know, it's like a lot of people, you know, our parents go to work every day. It's, it's set. It's like it's set. it's set. Like that's you know almost I mean? set for life. Yeah, that that's the real <laughs> set for life. That's like almost you got set a for career, life. yeah, but not only a career, a, a tangible career that yeah. you actually need. Mm-hmm. Like people will need actors. Always. They might not need me. They might not need you, but they're going to need some actors. Always. You writing shit. You need some actors. There's some guy who go walk in and you're gonna be like, I don't need you though. And that's <laughs> I, I'm just being real though. And you know this is true. <laughs> but not you. Not you though. Maybe you. <laughs> now I did three seats down, yeah. might need him. Right, right, but, right. Yeah, bro. It, it's a it's a tough, it's a tough transition. And it's, it's a, a very um Damn, I guess let's just call it what it is. It is a very tough, difficult transition. I've I've accustomed myself for so long to kind of normalize that thing and be like, well, it was interesting. You know, I try to mm-hmm. to fabricate what it was. It was very tough, bro. Yeah, it's very tough funny. to grow up in front of the world. It really is. And yeah, it's yeah. really just that. At least you didn't have Twitter. Dude. Ooh, or Can you, you imagine? Yeah. You well, technically. It came on the tail end. It came on the tail end. It came on the tail end. At least you didn't have Twitter and you didn't have like Instagram. Instagram. Because that then, you want to talk about growing up in front of the world. No, that's a whole different. You see. Even though. Everything. We'd both have a whole lot more bread. Yeah. Whole lot more bread. Oh, for sure. If we had that social media element during the days of The Wire, it would be. Oh, yeah. It would have been different. (laughs) It would have been different. One of us might have been canceled. All right, who knows in this culture, right? At the, in this day and age, but yeah, Sheesh. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a scary Sheesh, thought. Yeah. I don't know how people in today in like kids who are coming up now. It's just how they deal with it. Kids or like actors? What do you mean? No, no, like actors, like child actors or or ch- children who are in any form of entertainment. Like, how do they? Like, that's not normal. No, because you got to remember, like, it's one thing reading shitty comments about yourself at this age and like still who, who wants to read that? you know who i think about i think about the kids from stranger things yeah like for them. because they're kind of around that age that yeah. we were where it was like a 13 14 15 16 you know what i mean mm-hmm. like you're at that age where you're like a still a kid but you are definitely stepping into young adulthood yeah facts and um it's a lot of pressure and you're showing up to work having a lot of fun but you're making a lot of money and you're doing some of the best work in the world you've got fans from all right. over the world from here to there to there but and think how many in between all that think how many just shitty people who just shit on these kids oh, yeah, like, that's sure. what i'm saying and, yeah. and as human beings and it's not against these kids as human beings what do we do our eyes we bro f- a hundred people could tell you, man, Jermaine, I'm proud of you. You did a great job, man. You you really got something. You're headed somewhere. 
And then you got one motherfucker who's like, you suck, nigga. I mean, I'm just saying, nigga ain't that good. I mean, bro, did you see your last da 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 What is this? That, now you're like... Shit. Yeah, and that hurts. <laughs> like, no matter what, that hurts. There's people with millions of fans, and they yeah. read those, you go through the comments, they read it, and it's just, that shit hurts, man. It's not... Because it's not normal. It's not. It's not normal. It's um, not to have that in your back pocket at all times. No. Like, at all times. And at least we were like... You know, we were to an extent because we didn't have that shielded from probably a lot of the negativity. I, I was actually thinking about that. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's funny. I'm so glad I re- remember. I was thinking about that earlier today, that first premiere, how HBO PR at the time really protected us because we had those girls <laughs> at the hotel. Remember in Baltimore? The the the, uh, the 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 first premiere, wait, wait. The, the the hotel in Baltimore. Remember? Okay, wait, wait, and, this, there, this and there was the, the, and there were these two girls. That we had came. the tuxes on. That's New York. Nah, but in Baltimore, the Texas was in Baltimore, you had the green polo. Oh, that thing, that yeah. thing, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And then we, st- y'all stayed on the harbor, and then there was these two girls from New York that Huli and Tristan both knew, and they came and remember. S- I'm sorry. <laughs> well, Cecile, we love you, Cecile. Cecile from um, HBO at the time. Uh, she was really on our, on us. Like, they were protecting us. Because I was thinking about it. Like, they were trying to block. They weren't trying to let the girls go upstairs to the room, basically. Right. And they didn't, essentially. They were not letting it happen. That's why I don't remember the night. They, they, they right? <laughs> Exactly, exactly. The girls did not go upstairs to the room. And at the time, it felt like, damn, y'all blocking. But as a 30-year-old now, it's like, okay, Young child black men. Yeah, yeah. In these hotel rooms <laughs> with these young ladies. <laughs> what did you say? Like, with these young ladies. I'm just saying though, like, it could it, it could go left. It could go very It could left. go in, especially in this day and age. Like, all it takes is someone to say anything, and it's just like But they weren't protecting us, they were protecting their jobs and the corporation. Well, what <laughs> That's what they were protecting. What's, what's that face? Yeah, well, I mean, we, yeah, nah, one hundred percent. But at that time, you know what I mean? We were so <laughs> woven into the. Oh yeah, that's one point. Priority of what's going of, on. They're like, <laughs> we're not about to let these four little niggas mess up our season. That's not gonna happen. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But it worked out for us. Exa- it did. It, 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 did, did, it did. It did. But that's what I'm saying. Like, um, we were lucky. Because the people at HBO, they really did protect us. Like they, they packaged they us could have really. Never stopped us with Instagram, though. Oh, what? Yeah. The DMs. Yeah, 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 <gasps> yeah, 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 yeah. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. It would have been, it would have been a very different. Reality. I mean, was MySpace out? My, MySpace was out. Oh, oh niggas. Yeah, that's how a lot of people space. connected. I was on yeah, 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 yeah. Remember, I showed Julito on MySpace. He I was on. Oh, Julito was on this shitty New York version or what something, <laughs> bro. Some shitty version of a uh, MySpace or something. It was called Sconex. I think I remember that. I remember that. You remember Sconex? I remember that. It was like orange. It had the shittiest logo. Mm-hmm. He's then he used to sit there in front of that computer in the uh, in the production mm-hmm. office. And bro, he used to just go in and just like hidden girls back blah blah. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Nah, my nigga, like you got to get on MySpace. And then that nigga got on MySpace. He's like, where's the mother? He was like, oh, this is, <laughs> he was like, this is way better. I'm like, yeah, I think I might, I don't know if I put him on Facebook too. Oh, wow. I was on Facebook early. Me too. Yeah. Me too. I was able to get in there. Yeah. I was able to get in there, even though at the time you could only be in college. Um, oh, you had one of, you had it then. I had yeah, it when yeah. they first, okay, because when we were doing The Wire, that was when Facebook had first got like, like first, uh, what year is that? Two thousand five. Yeah, that's the first year it was like I think public. Yeah, and bro, I remember like I remember I took my first Facebook photo for my page in my apartment in Baltimore, and it was it was like my I had my so so death jacket on Duh. and my head, and I Duh. was like turn like turn to the side like bro. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> I remember that shit. I was like, oh, this is gonna go crazy. Oh, that man. was Scream Tour era. Scream Duh. Tour era. <laughs> Um, it, it was funny. Me and Cleo were talking about that. How we uh, how we saw each other at the screen tour and how we were like uh-huh. running around and shit. <laughs> you always you always laugh because you have that story that I I hate fa- that story. I faintly remember. I hate the story because I didn't get to go. <laughs> I didn't get to tell, go. Tell your screen. 
Uh, I, didn't, I didn't get to motherfucking go. Oh, you just didn't go at all. Yeah, no, 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 because um, nobody told me anything, so I didn't go. Oh. Yeah. I just showed up the next day at work, and everybody was like, that shit was lit. So wait, so, I'm like, so oh. <laughs> I see why that story. So you're talking yeah. saying from three different angles, yeah. you got told. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but you it's, you were the younger one. Yeah. I guess that's the bit. We're sorry, Jermaine. Yeah, a collective, yeah. a collective, we're sorry. Yeah. Hey, look at it this way. There's only like one artist who people still care <laughs> on that tour. So, you know, guess what, nigga? One or, one or Go two. Go to the Lovers and Friends tour, oh, one, nigga. One You're or good. two. Yeah, one or two. And even then, like, but yeah, one or two. But <laughs> that, that Scream tour era was good. Yeah, that, no, that was, that was a, a good time. Those were some good times. Those were good times. You know what else were some good times? See, this is, look at my transitions. I'm going to be good with this, oh, this podcast. All right, let's see. Um, I'm scared. You, you're scared. <laughs> you know what's funny? That's what everyone says when I, when I do this. When I when they see me on an iPad. I'm like, oh, Lord, because you're like, capable oh. of anything. They're like, uh-oh. You're capable of anything. I'm like, oh, shit. Let's, let's take a gander <laughs> into some, you know, some, uh, delve into some old school. Oh, <laughs> classic time. Where, where was this? That be? was the um that I had just got that was my the hair office? cut. Now that was on the sound stage because that was the rap party. Right, right. It I was. had just it stepped was. out the chair and got my hair cut after that. You didn't look like Dookie anymore. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly. why you smile so damn. Exactly. That, see, that's the smile you gave me on the first uh, first time we started the podcast. Oh yeah, for but. sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yo, I remember that was my Ed Hardy shirt. That was the first time my mom ever let me spend like a. This lot of was money. at the premiere in New York. That was at the premiere in New York. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. That was a good. And a lot time. of people don't know you and Tristan are cousins. We are cousins, like second cousins through marriage. That's still yeah. that's crazy. Yeah, what like what's Family. the odds of that? We're family. Oh uh, yeah, me Halito, you know, doing the thing. I mean, you put up, you put enough black people in a room from different parts of America. Y'all oh, gonna yeah, be related with, with somehow, like, some way. Yeah, good come point. on, man. You know, slavery. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, why am I smiling so hard? You just smiling so hard. You like, man, you need to hit this. Guy, I'm sure he runs something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was that like old the, white man runs he, something. He was now. the he was the mayor. Well, he was. What's he do now? The governor? Uh, no. They tend mm -hmm. to usually... Yeah, yeah, go up, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but that's Imani. You know, she's... Oh, oh yeah. yeah you yeah, just yeah, did yeah. a film with her. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, it's going to Cannes Film Festival. It's going we to Cannes? Yep, it's going to wow. Cannes. Yep, yep, yep. She's doing her shit. It's a short it? film. It's called... What's her What's her full name again? Just... Imani Nia Robinson. Imani Nia Robinson. Yeah, she is the writer and producer of uh, Three Blind Mice. It is a short film that's going to Con Film Festival. Uh, we're nominated for diversity. Okay. And um, Tristan's in it as well. Fire. And we did shoot it in Baltimore. Hey, only right. And there's Tristan's wife right behind me to the left. Oh, shit. I didn't <laughs> even realize Christina was in that. <laughs> that's wild. That's funny. I didn't even see that. That's funny. <laughs> Of wow. course, the classic. That's a very, very, very epic picture. I don't know if that guy to the right of Hooli <laughs> knew if he was a part I wonder to... where he's at now. <laughs> yeah, like, he's a part of history. That's a pretty popular that picture. Nigga, that like, nigga's walking by, like, I don't know what these niggas up to. They told me he looks straight. I know he's got a joke for a lot of family, like, dog, I'm in that picture, nigga. Yeah, dog. Like, Come nigga, on, you ain't in, in the that wire. picture. Nigga, you wasn't in the wire. Like, Who that right there? <laughs> Who that right there? I was born in these Baltimore streets. You don't know? Yeah, for sure. This that hilarious. damn brown bag. <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you just look poor. Oh, that's even oh, this is what we wow. did. That. Wait, how did you get this picture in high definition? Come on, man. I'm maestro. You haven't you figured this have out yet? You have to send me this. This was Entertainment Weekly. Entertainment Weekly spread. This, yeah. I know. I, oh, how did you find this? I remember. How did you find I need this? To get this framed. This is come good. on, dude. This is in, we were in Entertainment Weekly and killed that shit, bro. And then what's crazy is I'm. I remember I had my B, uh, Billionaire Boys Club shirt on, and they oh, told yeah, me I yeah, couldn't yeah, wear yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, they, yeah. And then I remember Julito was pissed because they made him change his like. Was it Billionaire oh, no, Boys Club or Famous Stars and Straps? No, it was Billionaire Boys. Okay, okay. Because okay. I literally bought an Aqua. I'll never forget. It was an oh, Aqua okay. Billionaire yep. Boys Club logo, <laughs> and then they were like, "You can't wear." The logos. And I was like, uh, so they put this. But he got his babes on. Yeah, but that those are shoes. Okay. Shoes are a little different. Oh, for sure. Yo, yeah, I, uh, I need this picture, though. Yeah. 
And, I and that's the D and Ricky. Uh, uh, D and Ricky. Uh, belt. Uh, yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You got to know to know, man. You got to know. It was an to era, know. man. It was, it an, was era. Such an era. Our moms wow. and us. Yeah, bruh. These, yeah. by the way, these are real pictures because these I were taken know. on the digital I camera, it. nigga. I remember. I remember where this was. Do you? We were. This was, was on the we... harbor when we went to um, ESPN Zone. That no, that was this day. Yeah. No, the ESPN Zone day is. Hold on, I got, I got more coming. Oh shit. Oh. <laughs> 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 you motherfucker! Look at this guy! You motherfucker! Dookie sleep. <laughs> Sorry. <sighs> yo, yo, you see how dirty my damn <laughs> sleeve is, yo? It, it, yo, it sucks. It. <laughs> you had to be dirty. I will never understand because now that I'm older, I'm like, damn, that does suck. Like you were always dirty. Now, it was none of us were fresh for real. Traumatizing. Julito, but like, yeah, that's oh kinda, yeah, Julito was fresh. That's kind of crazy that you can. I mean, they always put y'all in new things. <laughs> and you had them same pants, same yeah. shirt. Yeah, man. I mean, honestly, <clears throat> I laugh now. Obviously, <laughs> obviously, I laugh now. But that was a very heavy time. That was a very, 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 very heavy time. Like it, it was, it was doing a lot to me mentally, and I just really? didn't know it. Yeah, man, it was, it was a lot. Like especially as a child, though, you know. Now that I'm thinking about it, it probably would. It's almost I'm like playing somebody. Actor. Literally, I'm playing somebody who's not liked and ostracized and left out. And there was a lot of instances that felt that way. And then it, I looked that way, and it was just like <laughs> that shit. It, it, it was a lot. See, people but need to understand too. Like, yeah, we it, were kind of rough on Jermaine <laughs> in the process of shooting this. Like, but, but, <laughs> we were older. I would pick on him a bit. Maestro, <laughs> for me, for me, I don't know. For me, to be quite honest, like, I felt like I always understood you because I grew up in theater. Right. And I, from my understanding, you did too. Mm-hmm. You just remind me of a theater kid. I got it. Right. I got it. I got that whole little thing. It's like, oh, okay, he's, he's hot shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> He's, hot. He's hot shit. Okay, cool. I, I did that. <laughs> Whatever. You know what I mean? But it, it it was a it was such a um it was such a great time, but it was a huge transition because that's when I was from 13, 14, 15. So puberty's kicking puberty's in. Puberty's kicking yeah. in. And I really felt like that's who I was when I was going home. Mm, I feel you. So it made you more reserved and like yeah, you yeah, and like shit about. Yeah, yeah. And and you know, man, we were shooting a lot. Yeah. We nah, shot for like eight months. We were shooting a long time. We were shooting a long time. That first season, dude, that was a budget. That was a budget. They that shit. We didn't even know what what time it was for real. We were yeah. going into like the thick of like HBO royalty. Yeah, and ele- and elevated television as a whole. It was like Succession. Yeah. We just yeah. kind of hopped in on season four yeah, of Succession just, and became know, the top. Way less of the budget and way less of the love. But yeah, we were like Succession. We were like Sopranos too, just you know, with way less of the budget and way less. Of Didn't love. Sopranos do an Entertainment Weekly too? Uh, or, or yeah, they. I with think they're they had black a and white. But <laughs> it was cool that they gave us for that. No, no, they fact. gave us for that kind of Soprano yeah, moment. And you know what? They didn't give a shit. We deserved it. <laughs> Listen, man. Like I just being real, we we deserved it. We killed we, it. We we did our job. We on killed a, it. Also on a show that was where it was when we found it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. For um, starters, for yeah, for st- for starters, mm-hmm. the show was a masterpiece before we before we even touched it. It's almost kind of weird to talk about because there's not a lot of television shows you can say that with. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, uh, those were three really strong seasons. But of also television. think of it this way. I think when I look at the show, we were the best narrative switch they ever did. One of the best narrative switches I've ever seen in television. Facts. That's what I mean. Like, ever. Yeah. But I will also say, when you look at overall, I know that when they switched on two, it didn't do as well as the switch on four. I think two for me personally, mm. for me personally, mm-hmm. I think two actually um ages better. It ages better. Um, two ages better. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it ages. <laughs> <laughs> two ages better over time. Like that is and, true. and going back to it, because like um I, that 
now watching The Sopranos, I like the kind of mafia style oh, I love tone. So, so season two kind of had like this mafia undertone in the midst of like this street life, and I thought that that that's kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. We hit everything, you know. We had our, we had our, we did the media, mm-hmm. we did the schools, we, you know. Yeah, they pretty, they oh, they basically touched on everything in the city. Everything. Yeah. Bravo. Yeah, and let's let's get back to it. Hell yeah. Do you see my mouth, man? <laughs> <laughs> I, man, you know what's crazy, though? I'm, it's weird. Or not weird. It's good doing this, though, because I, I never thought of it that way. <sighs> but it's just like, yeah, when you're doing something every day, all the time. You do it 55 sh- times, it becomes character. It comes... Yeah. Re- repetition it becomes a part of and you. And then you're yeah, and you're young. Yeah, that's man, I'm sorry for that. Man. Yeah, it was heavy. I mean, it's, people it's, have it's helped you build to who you for are today. Sure, bro. Give you tougher skin. Nothing was That's all it. I wanted. I just wanted you to have tougher skin. Yeah, and I got it. And, I, and, and <laughs> he said, yeah, and I got it. And to be honest, man, I'm so thankful for it because you know, you guys were like brothers to me at that time, and I wasn't in school. Right. Right. So, so I also, had, so then the only <laughs> kids you're seeing are either being shitty or whatever. You're like, man, this shit is ridiculous. But from Plus my I'm understanding, <laughs> that's what school was kind of like anyway. Low key. So, yeah. I mean, but you went after. No. Oh, you just stayed out. Because I lived in Maryland, right? And so it was such a big deal. It wouldn't have been a, yeah. Yeah. It wouldn't have been a good idea for me to just go into public school. And at the time, like, you know, I mean, the show paid amazing, but I'm not. I was trying to get into college. I'm not said the show paid amazing. Well, you shit. The show didn't pay. That shit paid bird seeds. But that show paid though. (laughs) But I would respect. I would respect that the show paid a shit ton of opportunities. This nigga serious, yo. I'm dead serious. We didn't get nobody doing that. Let's be real. But they, the, oh, especially for, for real, yeah. especially for how big it was and what it was yeah, and yeah, what yeah. they and what they're paying the Sopranos and what they're paying. Stop it! We didn't or get paid. Euphoria. We didn't get paid shit for that. Dude. But but I will say it opened like you said, which was one of the dumbest things you said when we started. You're like it's amazing how when people think you made it, it's more of no uh, opportunity was created for me to go through another door. Yeah, and the door that was open due to that show. Yeah, and like don't get it twisted. Like yeah. It, it, not none of us would be where we are today without that show. You know what I mean? It definitely elevated us in some form or fashion. Extremely grateful for it. I say but that I'm without not going to sit here and act like HBO fucking paid us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe now that I think about it, I mean, pretty much. I mean, let's just be transparent. That's what this is all about, right? Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, getting like about, I guess, what eleven thousand dollars, barely ten every, grand. Yeah. Right. Or like ten grand every uh, ten days. It's cool. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. It's cool. It's better than nothing. It's cool. But for what but, for the level of work you're doing yeah. and for what you're doing and for what everyone else who's there is getting paid? No, bro. But they looked at it like this. Hey, most of these kids haven't done anything. So why would we pay them all this money when they're not proven? The only person who had that problem was me. And that's why they were going to replace me if I didn't sign that contract. I, I don't know oh. if you knew. Oh, my, because you got to remember, I had my own TV show. Yeah, stuff. I remember. So I did this, my research after the fact. Yeah, I'm so, like, oh. So, bro, like, I'm telling you, mm. they didn't pay a shit. I was making a lot more than that on when I was doing my other exactly. show. So, when you I did those checks The Wire, like. I remember we got the same attorney that I had for uh, my television show when I had it back when I was seven. Mm-hmm. And he was like, oh, this is great. My show got another show, blah, blah, blah. And he's going back at them with like sensible shit for a network. And they, oh, yeah, and it's HBO. And they're like, nah, nah, no, nah, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. And they just kept being like, no, no, no. It got to the point where they were like, they, somehow my dad got a call and they were like, hey, honestly, you might want to take over this because he's asking for stuff. He's going to fuck it up. Like, we're just going to move on. When BA calls you, when business affairs yeah. calls you, stop pushing, y'all. Yeah. That's because when business like, affairs calls you personally, let it go. Yeah, um, <laughs> look, unless you know you got something in your pocket that you're like, I'm not worried about y'all. Yeah. And it's like, you right. don't need it. But I, right. at that time, it was one of those things. It was dope. like, I wanted to do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was obviously an incredible opportunity. Yeah. And so we were trying to make it work. And so we ended up doing it. Because they, you know, we were favored nations. So all of, of us course. got paid yeah, the same. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's my point. So since that's the case, bro, by the time taxes and agency comes out of that, like, we were just kids. So since we were kids, we didn't have things necessarily. Well, I know, like, 
you, on your end, you didn't have to. I, on my end, I didn't have to. But I know, like, I don't know police don't trust the situations. Like, who knows what they were helping out at home? Mm-hmm. Who knows what? So mm-hmm. my point is, I'm just saying, that generally speaking, kids, ah, uh, you can pay them less because they have no responsibilities. Yeah, none. So they took advantage of that. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's just for it to be what it is. You know, just say it just is what it is. That is what it was. That is what it was. You, you're a terrible. No, it's here, it's here for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's here he for, said it. It's, it's here for a reason. Man, <laughs> no, no, I'm no, but, saying, like, but it is what it was. I mean, it's business at the end of the day. And to be honest, Maestro, bro, like this industry has changed since then as far as diversity, eh, blackness, it's helped. and tele- it's, 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 it's helped a, it's great, a great deal. deal. Like it's definitely, it's not where it was. It's I'll say not that. Yeah, where not it not. was. No, it's not where it was. I, I would like to see less. All. I would like to see more black stories. I like to see more black stories that are just real black stories, though, Word. and not just like, oh yeah, we had racism and then people, you know, oppressed us and like I, I'm tired of the black trauma stories. I'm mm-hmm. very tired of those. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm also tired of forced diversity. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, don't just don't just give me, you know, a. a trans black Asian black and Asian kid and then be like oh I don't have to hire any more blacks and Asians I got this one yeah that you know what I mean and if you're gonna do it give them a real storyline mm-hmm. give them like a real arc where it's like oh no he has just as much storyline as the regular white dude or the regular blah blah, blah. like <clears throat> you feel me like you need- when it comes to like from what I'm learning as I'm going and developing mm-hmm. you want to have multiple points of view you just, oh, true. You just want to, you know what I mean? Like, but uh, give no, them but, a point of view, though. No, no, That's no, 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 for sure. No, no, but I, but I agree with you for sure. It's like, um, I feel like, uh, any anything can be said if there's multiple points of view offered, mm, and you. um, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's like, well, this person may feel this way. You know what I mean? You might feel that way. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, I think when you put uh, when people really make things intentionally diverse, if that's a theme they're exploring, I guess, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's like, just make sure it's... Just make sure every... It, it's a real thing and you, it, it, it's real. Make sure it's a real thing and it's how people really talk about it, how people really see it in addition to yeah. it, you know what I'm saying, being kind of like, not marketable, but marketable. Mm-hmm. If you're gonna go for the marketing kind of diverse inclusion thing, make sure there's a real ass storyline. That's exactly. And <laughs> make sure that, like I said, make sure their point of view is valid. So, or or they or they are giving a real point of view. I want, you know, that's all I'm asking for. Like, I don't want, you know, just the random guy who's there or the random girl who's there because, well, we, it's here for the numbers mm-hmm. because then they're not even getting a real point of view. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, your story's still going and. Mm-hmm. This direction, so um, mm-hmm. that's the only that's the only thing I would say I don't like about it. But now let's go to the pros. Pros are I see more people who look like me on television. For sure. Um, shows are getting more free reign for sure. to allow characters to be who they are. Like even something like uh, on Abbott Elementary. I was just buddy when, wearing when you a do rag. It's impossible to have this conversation, and it's impossible to have this conversation and not talk about Abbott Elementary. Abbott Elementary's phenomenal, dude. You just you see yourself on there, yeah. man, and it's not forced. It's not mm-hmm. like this overly black, yeah, hyper black, or you know, hypo black. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, and the point of view is real. Yeah, and that's that's what makes it so great. Like, it's in Philly. It's in the city. These kids are kids. <laughs> you know what I mean? They they're colorful. Yeah. And everyone's going through things. Everyone's not rich, mm-hmm. and but they're still cool. And no one's struggling. You know what I mean? They're they're making a way for themselves. Yeah. Everyone's good. Like more of that. Yeah, more just of that. Story, the stories <clears throat> that aren't just po- impoverished black stories as well. I mean, that's something. Obviously, it's like people don't want you to say his name now, but it's like the same thing Cosby did. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he did give us a black. Yeah. He gave a black perspective. Yeah, yeah. He did in a world where. Yeah, things were getting better. We had the Eddie Murphys and stuff. Things mm-hmm. were getting better, but it was also still, oh, we have a black guy in the back so we can say we have a black guy, opposed to what Bill Cosby gave us was, no, black stories, elevated black stories. Did you, you know? see, did you see, Um, there was a doc on Showtime about it. I think it's like 
who's mad at Bill Cosby or something or what happened to Bill Cosby or something. And it, it was a really cool doc series because, of course, they talked about all of that. That, that went also, down, but yeah, it also talks about NBC and uh, but it talks about the nature of the industry that already existed when this black man got into it mm. and how he kind of picked up the customs of what was going on and he went crazy. Like, of course, it was just inappropriate, but like I see what you're getting at. It was like this was the world that it was. Now the one guy who's getting reprimanded for living in that world is the black guy. I mean, you know, you say Harvey Weinstein as well, because because there was a there were there was a, there were a lot of people who were doing that type of thing back then. Well, well of course, yeah. but but that's what I'm saying. And yeah. that documentary just explored that because mm-hmm. it, it's kind of like half monster, half hero. Like yeah. he 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 was really taking advantage of a lot of innocent people. Well, but sure. think how many think how many just how many over the course jobs of, he provided for. If there if there's one Bill Cosby, if we had to go name all the black men who in history have done to the level of what Bill Cosby has done in film. We'd probably, we get out with like three. Yeah. Maybe. Three. Yeah. Maybe four. Like who were also recognized. Mm-hmm. Not saying that a lot, mm-hmm. haven't done shit, mm-hmm. but who were recognized mm-hmm. and actually mm-hmm. hit that next level. Mm-hmm. There's no way you're telling me out of all these other productions of things that were going on. It's like, yeah, come on one. now. Like Bill yeah. Cosby didn't own no studio. He wasn't even doing it as big as Tyler Perry. You know what I think about? You see what about? I'm saying? Like, so it's, there's no way he was the, the biggest factor in Hollywood of, you see my point? No chance. Yeah. Like, no chance. Yeah. I, I, I think, you know what I think about? And I hope this doesn't get me in trouble, but like, I think of um, the movie American Beauty. Yeah. Yeah. And how it won Best Picture. Yeah. Who's voting? There you go. And it's just like when you really look back at the movie, it's like. But then we got to cancel the guy. <laughs> for doing what for he doing did what in the movie. doing what we hired him to do. Bro, it's, but because it's. It's like, come on, but, that's kind of twisted, here's right? my point, though. It's, it's kind of twisted. This is why I've, I, I, I move the way that I do that. Because you twisted. realize it's like, you know, well, just, it's all bullshit. Man. Yeah. It's all, mm. it's one thing to be cordial. It's another thing to respect the people you Let's just brass tacks. No one lives at all in the world. No one lives the way that network television shows you that people live. No one lives that way. That's very true. Now, network has definitely gotten a little grittier over time. But we know what the, even just like the things you know you can say and can't say or on the news. No one lives like this. Mm-hmm. If everyone lived where with every waking moment, every word they said, everything... No one would make it. Had to be filtered through. If Fil- every word you said had to be filtered through a writer's room. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, you wouldn't the, say anything. The world isn't like that. Yeah. It's all bullshit to mm-hmm. begin with. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're, mm-hmm. we're all virtue signaling. We're all, we're not the people, even to the people close to us, we're not who they believe we are. And these are people who are close to us who hear at least a semi amount of what we really feel i'm reading this book that talks it, it describes it um dr joe dispenza breaking the habit of being yourself he's, you're the third person to say that book on this podcast it's it's, it's a great it's book. a powerful book man mm-hmm. and it talks about the space in between like who you really are and what you're presenting and kind of like you want that gap to be as closed as possible you know what i mean you don't want it to be like uh... that you know that's exactly that's exactly how i feel what why i try to be as open as I can be, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, with certain things, because you just start to realize, like, we're, you know, especially in this business as a whole, whether it's film, whether it's music, whether mm-hmm. it's just entertainment as a whole, sports, it, you're only valuable because people with real money have <laughs> this side project that they want to put money into because it makes them money. Like, for example, mm-hmm. you think, you know, Warner Brothers, sure, they make, like, you know, they make movies, that's the thing. But, like, how much other shit does Warner Brothers own? How much other shit do Music? they... Music? Yeah, that's my point. So, mm-hmm. like, the, and mind you, these are side projects of other things they really mm-hmm. do because, mm-hmm. one, you know, all of these are owned by larger entities. Mm-hmm. And, so, in theory, like, none of these companies is... Sony, yeah, they make some movies. 
You could be in a Sony project. It'll change your life. Sure. Your your tiny little life. These niggas make TVs and bro. headphones. And, <laughs> you, you know yeah, what I like, mean? Like laptops and shit. Chargers. Nigga, and, this ain't yeah. nothing to the kid. Like this is just some side bullshit we do. Yeah. It's like you being like, well, I'm I'm on the hottest Amazon Prime show. Nigga, they'll get you clippers here in the day. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. they don't they'll, give they'll a deliver fu- you fresh fruit. They don't give a fuck in an hour. about this little this little side shit is just so they can win some awards and they like they like it. It's a great, but the fact that people go in here, live their lives a certain way, so they can be in this tiny little entity of a much larger thing, you gotta question it. Because then you start to see it's like, well, there's no way most of these companies could have the opinions they claim they hold. Yeah. And be this large. It's impossible. It's too much bleed over in too many other sections. It's just how it is. You know what I mean? Like, so sure, I think it's dope when I see, you know, a, you know, a, a, a young Chinese girl leading an <laughs> Apple TV Plus show. Mm-hmm. Because how, you know, we don't, it's just like black people. We don't see them all the time, right? Right. But it, it, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of fucked up because that's also the same type of girl if she was born over there would be making their phones. Right. You see where the parallel lies. Somebody actually, uh, Adam Conover, he posted a tweet and it was hilarious. He was like, Yeah, I'm sorry, HBO, that we have to, or, well, no, not HBO, Apple TV. I'm sorry, Apple TV, that you have to stop producing uh, episodes of your very popular show about workers fighting back against the system because you actually have to pay your writers. Basically, like, Severance is about yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he's like, yeah, sorry that it's happening in real life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was just like, damn. I mean, art imitates life so hard, dude. I mean, I mean, it's funny because you're saying it's like the life you see in TV is not real. Yeah. But then art does have that weird way of imitating life. You know, um, they're saying as far as... Uh, as far as the writer strikes, they um they started sending suspension letters. I saw with people who had deals. Did and well, but <laughs> David Simon responded on Twitter and was like, you know, after because of course, all right, so there's a strike. Anyone who has a deal with the studio, mm-hmm. obviously they're gonna suspend their deal with anyone that has an overall. Because right. technically, during this time, you are not working for us. You're not. You're choosing not to work. Yeah, so we're so. not going to send you checks. So we're going to suspend you, basically. So, yeah. you know, the suspension is very kind of much a part of the strike. It's, you know, that's very natural. But it is just interesting because, you know, the emotion behind it. David Simon had tweeted, like, you know, after 25 years of uh, writing for the network, this is what happens. <sighs> you know, it. I just... I just hope that it can be figured out because it's not the same industry that it was before. Yeah. We are a heavy streaming industry. Yeah, and there's no reason that streaming royalties for all of us, even actors, isn't better. Like, bruh, listen, you know, most shows that aren't on network now, they do buyouts. So uh, You're not seeing any residuals. Uh Unless you're on a network show. Mm Mm-hmm. If you're on a streaming show, you're on like, you know, stars or something mm-hmm, like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, like you're not getting residuals mm-hmm. for what you've done. Mm-hmm. And we're going to stream this bitch over there. Now mm-hmm. we're going to pay you an extra 10000 mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Or 15000 Yeah, the upfront. Yeah, the upfront's good. It's much better. But the problem is that's it. Once that tap is closed. Because you really want that 15000 after you got that check to kind of hold you over. You bruh. Know I mean? But to, yeah, right. You don't want it all up front. But, <laughs> no. Yeah, bruh. I want to look, it all up I wanna look back later and be like, man, shit is uh, Oh. Woo. Exactly. This residual check just exactly. uh, all, right, all right, cool, cool, cool. I'll straight exactly. up. Exactly. I don't want to have it all at once. Like, yeah. that's, that's a, a yeah. recipe for disaster. Yeah. It's a uh, recipe for you needing them again sooner. I just think we got to figure out what's the currency of uh, streaming. Like, well, bro, so here's the here's what I need. I need to do more research on this, but just brass tacks. Think about it. Same as like Spotify, right, or Apple Music, or right. any of these things. Where there's not language for these things and a lot of this stuff, and so if people aren't watching TV and they're doing these things right now, this is just their loophole. And they're always going to have new loopholes. I mm-hmm. get it. They're great at business. That's mm-hmm. why they, they, they do. Are, they do. Yeah. yeah, but. 
yeah, there's no way that there isn't money there. Like, think of it this way. At least we know how much a stream is supposed to be on Spotify. Yeah. You don't really know what a stream is on Netflix. You don't know what a stream is on Amazon. You don't know you what a stream no is worth. no idea. Because also, <clears throat> from the way they tell it, which I don't believe to be true, there has to be money per stream. But the way they tell it is all these places are, it's not based on that because they're, uh, they are. Not t- network? No, no, no. Oh, they're subscription based. So they make, they claim they make their money off of straight subscription because in theory, if you're watching Amazon Prime, right, it's not, but see, they also do have advertising. They do. I was just about That's to say, I, yeah. the lower tiers. Yes. The lower tiers have advertising because I feel like Amazon, yeah, I don't see a ton of advertising on Because on the currency I'm believing is in the uh, attention span. Kind of like Well, Instagram. we're getting you here. Getting you on the platform. If you come to us, we can sell you whatever the fuck else we want. And subscription, bro. That's why all I'm saying, like, it's the difference between, you know, TV's free, my mm-hmm. nigga. Like, mm-hmm. so you can mm-hmm. turn this on at any time. Mm-hmm. And sure, there's going to be some on channel three, channel seven. And that's why you got to watch these long ads in between. YouTube's mm-hmm. free. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, the new yeah, TV. Yeah, YouTube's yeah, free. Yeah, yeah. So, of course, you got to watch ads. But if I can get you roped in to subscribing which cable kind of was mm-hmm. but no like no you're gonna subscribe so just give me $5.99 a month give me seven dollars a month that's gonna go into perpetuity now we just gotta make sure we keep coming with shows you wanna watch mm-hmm. we gotta make sure we return the movies on. yep mm-hmm. we gotta keep the content flowing but you will sit here and watch this shit all day because you already paid for it so now if you're Amazon you're getting a hundred dollars for Prime from every individual basically your Apple, you're getting, you know, you're getting ten dollars. Not that once again, not that we need this. Mm-hmm, nigga. We sell mm-hmm, these iPhones, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. we're still getting that mm-hmm. revenue on top of you paying us for iCloud storage. On top of you paying us or us taking these fees off all these apps you download. On what? what? Okay, there we go. Yeah, on top of all that kind of shit, like, bro, it's it's a very because I mean, I'm assuming even the advertisement on like you know lower tiers a company comes to the company and says okay we see this is how many eyeballs you have so we will pay you this to kind of put our advertisement there so in addition to the subscription there is the advertisement yeah and it's like you know um i believe as it stands you know the 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 creators and minds behind it for the most part don't really see that when it comes to the streaming Mm -hmm. so i think they're just kind of wanting to see something well yeah i mean it's also (laughs) the situation where I mean, the more you split that up, I mean, that's the thing, though. These executives of these places are making, like, $70 million a year, the CEOs and stuff. So it's like, yeah, there's, you know, it's less money for that shit. If, then yeah. pro- and then, not to mention it's a lot of production money. budgets and dot. And once again, not saying that the way that they do it is right or anything like that, but I do know that is why they've been sustainable for all these years, and it's just figuring out. So we were talking about this. So you've mm-hmm. been active in writing. So what are the basic things that, writers are looking for in the strike like some of the key points basically they're looking for expansion um <clears throat> in the writer's room as far as uh uh it's about the mini rooms the way that it currently stands like they're paid kind of almost like subcontractors per episode but like let's mm. say okay this this show works for eight weeks eight episodes eight you know whatever mm. okay so i've made about let's say hmm, fifty thousand dollars right whatever and what if i don't work again right you know yeah, yeah. so we would hope that we can kind of re- lean and rely on you know these streaming residuals right? right and also the other point is um i believe bringing more writers into the writer's room for these episodes because from what i understand it is a feeling of writers being asked to do more and yeah, being paid less mm-hmm. opposed to having more writers in the writer's room and really encouraging that space because, you know, where it's headed now, pretty much it'll just be showrunners kind of on a Zoom call saying, whew, peace. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Opposed to the old-fashioned style of writers really working on a show over time, contractor getting paid. They can close out. After this is done, they know they have a cushion of residuals because of the plays, you know what I mean? Right. But that structure is kind of disappearing with streaming. Yeah, but, but you know, it's not just 
streaming's a part of it, but you know what I also think the issue is too? Now, now hearing you explain that, bro, it's the way that our, it's the structure we've set up for our whole society. Yeah. Okay, so, and I always talk about this, the barrier yeah. to entry to do pretty much anything, and AI is making this incredibly, incredibly easy, but the barrier to entry even prior, like, you know, back in the day, you know, you had to play some instruments. You yeah. had to sing good. Mm-hmm. You had to, you know, oh, you had to know how to cut things to tape. Mm-hmm. Or you knew, and even in film, you had to know how to, like, mm-hmm. there, you weren't checking out the shot on your phone before you did it. Like, no, these guys knew. They were professionals. They were real professionals. Trained. Bro. Trained. So I think as things moved on, you know, the corporations had to, like, I can't get this anywhere else. Like, mm-hmm. I really need you. Mm-hmm. We now live in a space where not only you can find out everything or whoever's popping or whatever, they can too. Mm-hmm. So we'll just go on here and I think it's the opportunity game. And we both know how that works. Going back to even what we were talking about p- before. They're very, you know, people always tell you, well, it's a great opportunity. Yeah. We don't have any. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You saw, yeah, we ain't got no money for you. Yeah. But, we, but the, the opportunity. Opp- and the door, <laughs> look, and the door is going open. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So since that's the game, yeah. I think so so many more people are ready to jump mm-hmm. at any opportunity because they have nothing else. And the level of talent that you can find who hasn't done anything is high if you go look. Because any and ever if you were the greatest edit one of the greatest editors over at one of these studios mm-hmm. for X like amount of years. Mm-hmm. You're not going to tell me that there's not some kid who's going to figure this out without going to school. Mm-hmm. And if you just show him mm-hmm. your, your system, mm-hmm. he's going to do it for a fraction of the price. Yeah. And he's going to be fucking happy to do it. Yeah. And But I'm just saying, I think that's the issue we live in now. Yeah. Where it's studios are really testing their weight of like, mm-hmm. oh, like, how much do we need you? Yeah, like you. Because a lot of people want an opportunity to write in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. So how much do we need you? you? And, you know, unfortunately, there's a union. So the union helps with that because you must be in the union to do it. Yeah. So this is why these things work out, generally speaking. But it, it, obviously, there was a whole pandemic. Right. <laughs> obviously, yeah. right? So I think. A lot of studios spent a lot of money keeping people entertained. <laughs> yeah. And I think they didn't have that whole structure of streaming really quite figured out. Mm. And now it kind of feels like the saying. writers are kind of paying for that. You know what I mean? Because you would have had so much more money, especially during 2020. Yeah. You would have made some bread. Yeah. If, you, yeah. if the theaters were open, if, you know... Things were rocking and rolling, but shows were shutting down, pausing production. You have to almost add 15% to your budget for this COVID testing thing. You know what I mean? Like, you can't shoot a movie if you're not COVID testing every three days. Every You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like a lot of money was spent during pandemic. And the, the way that the dollar was once going back into the studios, it wasn't the way that it went back this time. Like, there were a lot of people streaming, but you had movies that Disney was making for, like Mulan. It was for the theaters, but mm. now it is an internet one. And you all, oh, you lose, yeah, you definitely lost money on that. Yeah, like, no question. Coming to Especially America, the, the second one, you know yeah. what I mean? It was supposed to be a theatrical thing and it became an Amazon Prime thing. Now they told us it was number one, it streamed more than anything else, it streamed X amount of hours. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But. I think now they have it figured out where it's like, oh, this is how we make that. Well, I think also the pandemic, I didn't think about this either, but now that you said that, I think it showed us too, like, it showed the studios, though, how much power they had also because it was like, okay, even if we're not making shit, we'll just go buy shit from people who are making shit. I think that's the the other issue is just the fact that you can do so much on your own now and a company like Netflix, mm-hmm. yeah, they want to have their own shows that they own. But think how many things they can kind of just go buy, buy, to buy go keep acquire, people, to just keep people entertained. Like, oh, that's already, you kind of already made this. And guess what? You ain't got no money. Come over here. We'll make this for real. And we'll make it. And it just, 
because people come on bro like think of our necessities in today's times yeah like, we're spending yeah 14.99 on every, every time we see that email sorry but we're going up again bruh yeah you're paying that you yeah. paying a 14 if you would have told our parents it'll be 20 20 soon. years <laughs> ago oh well you're gonna be paying like 14.99 for like eight different apps they'd be like you sound crazy as hell like well, i ain't even who? got cable right they're like um <laughs> We no. didn't even have Wi-Fi back then. Like, you know what I mean? Like, no, you're paying. You paying for a phone you don't own. You paying for. <laughs> you pay if you got a new one. I got an old one. I own this one now. Mm-hmm. But like, let's be real. I didn't own it for a very long time. You, you pay for a phone you don't own. You paying for streaming services with all the content you can't even save, unless you have internet. You can Well, I mean, you can download stuff. I mean, save like you don't have the file. You don't own you. You're paying into. Sh- Multiple of these, you're buying app subscriptions, you're buying virtual space. The headphone. You're buying, you're, oh, you the can't. Watch. Yeah, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Bro, you're buying all this shit. And then on top of that, they've made everything easier to buy with subscription. For sure. So now, even if you go in, remember back in the day, if you went to the store and you wanted some, some shit like some AirPods. Yeah. And I know your parents would have told you the same thing as mine. It's too if much. If I would have been like, <laughs> I want these AirPods, they would have been like, yeah, these are expensive, they're too much. But then also it would have been like, well, you can buy them with like a payment plan. My yeah. parents will look at me crazy and be like, buy no damn AirPods with no payment plan. If you can't afford them, you shouldn't have them. That simple. Now we buy everything on subscription. Everything. And, uh, and, and from the book that I read from Dave Ramsey, Total Money Makeover. <laughs> TMM. Yeah, like... The the subscriptions and the the bills, the monthly subscriptions are really what can put you in debt. They are sometimes. You yeah. know what I mean? Sometimes you just you're, you're so subscribed to every goddamn thing. How do you really kind of build? I mean, if you got it like that, you got it like that, obviously. But you know, like you said, you, the Apple Car will come out, and that'll just be a part of your monthly, monthly subscription. subscription. Oh, and then they're gonna the Apple car is going to come out and you're going to be able to buy it with your Apple card. Of course. If you have enough credit. Of course. And then you're going to be paying Apple another $1,000, $950 a month on top of the phone you don't own. On top, They're going to start being like, buy the Apple car, get a free iPhone. And you'll get a reminder on your Apple watch to pay your bill. Ding. Oh. <laughs> oh, listen. I done seen a couple of those. <laughs> and they'll wallet. start shutting down your tech if you don't pay the phone down. They're Can like, imagine? The, imagine you're like, I'm repo. not going to pay my car bill. And you should just don't start up. Oh, that would be a different world. I feel like we, I feel like Tesla does that. We ain't got to put a boot on your shit. It won't go nowhere. It won't my, go nowhere. My dog is not going nowhere. That would be, yo, that would be crazy. It'll say a balance due. You're trying to start the car. <laughs> Balance <laughs> due. You're like, dog, it's an emergency. I'm going to the bank right now. You're trying it's to reason with your car. <laughs> It'll take you to the bank only. Self-driving <laughs> activated. <laughs> to the bank. <laughs> Choose your provider. You got like Bank of America, Chase. 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 <laughs> PNC, PNC. That's funny. That's good. <laughs> you know what? I had a couple more photos. Let's see. For all the Wire Nostalgia fans. Oh, wow. That's yeah. a good one. Yeah, That's a good Jermaine. one. I, I have these all in a, in a book at home. Uh, Jermaine, myself, wow. Method Man, Lolito. And Method's killing Tristan. it, man. He's still, like, oh, yeah, kicking yeah. butt. Man, and he, he was doing it before we even was. Yeah, that for sure. Longevity is for incredible. For sure, yep. Yeah, respect to Method. I mean, he's an actor. He's yeah, an at this actor. point, he's an actor. Yeah. You can't... Yeah. Really, even be like, uh, no, he's, no, an, he's an actor. actor now, he's yeah. done the work. He's been on television for almost twenty years. Like, you know what I mean? This, Consistently, this dude is key. a beast. Yeah, he's a beast. That was the ESPN Zone day. Oh yeah, yeah what our homie Ty Muggsy Bowes. Ty, said. Ty Bowes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that was cool. That was a fun day. I remember that. That was a really fun because that was right after I shot the you all look out for me? Shit. Oh. That was that day. Yeah. You look exhausted. You like, man, I'm tired, man. <laughs> yeah, You're like, I just earned. This is, this is, a, this is a rough day. <laughs> that yeah. was a that was a whew. what was going through your mind? Like, was that tough for you or were you just kind of acting? Like, how was that? Because that moment, like, people ask me about that moment when they talk about the moments, top moments. That's up there. Yeah. That's up there. I don't know. Man, you know, I think it was just, 
doing, doing the work. Doing, doing the work. work. Yeah. He's like, I'm doing but the work. But just trying to just, I feel like it's always, when I act, uh, or, you know, when I'm given the opportunity to act, which is saying. When you which, act, when you when, act. Uh, it, it It's like, it's kind of like a puzzle. It's just like, how do I, how do, how can I pull this off? So whatever I was doing in that time was like, just how can I pull this off and make this feel as real as possible? I feel some people try to like 100% just like get themselves in the, and you, sure, you put yourself in the headspace, you pay attention to the angles. But for me, it's just like, I don't know what I was thinking at that moment, but I just know generally my process has always been like, okay, don't, you know the lines, don't worry about the fucking lines. Just like whatever probably at that time was my biggest betrayal, mm -hmm. I probably just was mm -hmm. thinking of that and trying to, you know, work that out. Mm -hmm. But it, it definitely came out better than I could have hoped. Yeah, sure. that's a, that's a good moment. No, nah, you know that's what my favorite a, moment, a good moment in the show is after like after I like finally watched the whole series. <clears throat> the uh, there's two. Obviously, that final moment when you're like uh, walking back into the horse dudes type. And I'm just, I remember watching that because I I saw season five more recently than mm -hmm. I saw like the other, and I was just like, why this nigga hanging out with this horse? Stop, man. Go do something good, man. This nigga, this nigga not ain't got shit stroke, going on, bro. Not my bro. show caring about the character 20 <laughs> yeah, years after was, the show came out. Hey, man, you know, I had to get around to it. But no, I was like, I was just thinking, I was just like, why are you hanging out with this nigga? Like, this nigga, I mean, I get it. Y'all yeah, same kind of goofy, but yeah. that nigga got something wrong with him. Yeah. Like, yeah, um. And then, no, the, but my favorite is when you the piss balloon story. And you mm. say it to Tristan. And then that nigga just don't remember. Mm -hmm. The car, yeah, that was good. That's one of my favorite. Because I just feel like it's one of those things, like, outside of the show. It's something that as you get older, there's certain moments when, like, like you've just changed so much from that point that I, it's like, I feel you. Yeah, or, or I mean, it's like one of those cool, like, he honestly doesn't. Like, he just doesn't. Like, I got, like, that's just not. It that I, hasn't been my life for so long. That's almost like if one of us were to end up, like, or, God forbid, being homeless or some shit like that. Mm -hmm. It's like, the, these people, and I'm saying we were like, that's what it mm -hmm. ended up being. These people would never mm -hmm. exist again. Mm -hmm. It would be one of those things, like, it'd be different. like, yeah, it's just a whole different, like, you're not it's interacting with yeah. the old, home, like, that, that shit's gone. Yeah. And it's just like, that was just like, damn. You know, it's it's funny. I don't think I really understood why the f hell he said that until just now. Because I guess just naturally I was connected to Dookie, and it's like, what do you mean you don't remember, asshole? Yeah. But that's then it's like, yo, oh, by the time this happened, he had experienced a lot. You know how lot. many people I've murdered? Do you know how many people, like, there's yeah. so much shit I've gone yeah. through? Not to mention, like... Like you talking about some piss balloons? Yeah, nigga, I don't remember that. I don't remember that. <laughs> like, that's just, it's not. Like, I, don't, nigga, I don't remember that. I barely remember <laughs> them other niggas. Like, yeah, yeah, them Randy and, you know, and uh, name it was cool. But, like, I don't, I'm not even thinking about them niggas. Like, that shit's just, mm -hmm. that's gone. Gone, yeah. You only here because I always fucked with you. Because you, you was helping else to take go, care And you taking care of Buck. <laughs> and I ain't got to go get no real help. And I know I could trust He's you because like, I don't you trust you. Because babysitting people. my brother, nigga. <laughs> yeah. Like,. Oh, that that was the other one too. Oh man, when you go ask Pres Belusky for for that money, no, you know we just we just gotta get a couple things off. The, I was like, damn, no, and then he and then the same pain in his eyes of like, damn. So this not just gonna be a loan, do like. Yeah, no, 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 I'll be back, Mr. P. No, 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 I'll be back. I'll be back. I promise. It's just like, oh, no. But um, one thing I can, what I can say now writing myself, I think we both can say you attribute it to the writing. Oh, 100%. Because it's like the words were there. The story was there. The structure was there. We just had to kill it. That's but true. they really set it up for us to fly with really great moments. Like, it was all in the story. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just grateful for, like, those moments. Oh, bro. It's those a... moments. I'm grateful for those moments. You know what I mean? No. As a character, as a black yeah. actor to say on television, I got to really kind of play some range and do some things. And yeah. 
I mean, it's it's like it's. I mean, it's Snowfall. It's the same idea of like I loved how they did the same. Thing. Maybe that's why I even just said that. I'm thinking of Snowfall. Snowfall. The ending gave me that same feeling though of like overall. I know like obviously not because I hate when people try to make the comparisons. Because yeah, it's like there there isn't a comparison. It's I don't think so either. I think they're both amazing shows, but they're different shows. They're very di- well. Okay. This is why I would never compare the two shows. And this has, this has no shade or anything. Yeah. One's on FX, one's on HBO. 100%. We're done here. Yeah. Because there's certain things you can't do on FX that you can do on HBO. Yeah. Oz can never be on fucking FX. So let's the not. The Sopranos could never be on FX. Cannot. Season. So let's just stop there yeah. if we're comparing because you're yeah. comparing literally. We got gritty. Really, really gritty. Not only that, <laughs> The Wire is and shows like The Wire. Mm-hmm. The writing is so intricate in the way that they are rolled out. You know what? They can be fucking boring sometimes. It's okay. Like, that's part of it. Every fucking scene doesn't have to catch your attention. Plus, we didn't have social media. So everything didn't have to be a fucking clip that you could show online. So shows could be a little boring just to get a little story out. I was a, But it's not really what well, one might see, see boring. boring. Yes. It's information and set up. Exactly. Exactly. That's why I feel so good at episode seven because you don't got all this information. You like, oh shit. Exactly. But see, now we're playing in a world where people don't give it that. Though. But I will circle back to say I, I have not seen Snowfall. I've seen the first episode. I've seen the pilot. I oh, think it's, it's great. It's one of the best shows. And I know Chris is on it and sure. kills it. No, I, bro, it's a great show. But and like, but I wouldn't compare those two. I would compare maybe Snowfall and Power. Yeah, I think those sure. are be- that's a better better I can comparison. See that. I can see that. Um, but but I just think the kind of show because of era, because of network, because of just a multitude of things. Now, if we're just saying some of the best crime stories, the best crime stories ever told, I'm just getting at. Oh, Snowfall would definitely be For up sure. there in the black crime story family For sure. world. For sure, no question. For sure, you know, I just wouldn't compare the two because they're just. If you actually look at it, they're different animals. I mean, I'm the one who played Avon's uh, sister. Oh, she's in Snowfall. She plays Sissy, man. So it's kind of like you know, you you know, the writers were watching The Wire. You know, they were referencing The Wire. And I mean, when I I'm gonna be real with you, when I saw the Franklin picture real quick, I thought it was Dookie. Like Dookie, yeah. Like when he's kind of on the street, apparently when he's all kind of drugged out and stuff. Oh, that one. I thought you were talking about, I'm always thinking of the nigga yeah. in the suit. I was like, I always saw Idris. No, 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 like no, no, no. Idris, what Idris' character would do if the nigga was in Los Angeles. Oh, oh, da- oh no, 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 no. Well, well Stringer yeah, Bell. That's what I'm getting Stringer at. Bell, Stringer, right, yeah, right, right. This looks like what Stringer Bell would do. But when I saw the he, image. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like. Look I, like grown Dookie. I, yeah, I was like, whoa, this is real Dookie. Like, yeah. what happened? So, I mean, I think But I will tell you that. That finale, I I love the way just, you know, I love the way that they flipped the narrative on its head. Like I said, it was, it, the finale is just one of those moments where it's like, damn. Because they apparently jumped forth. Yeah, they, they jumped forward. Well, not even that. You just, you see his, well, they jumped forward a, a year or two, but it just shows how, you know, everything went downhill. Damn, man, I do want to watch that because now I'm thinking, like, how does the guy that went in, like, that was working with the CIA become Dookie? But, the, but that's <laughs> like, the point. How the, how the hell? And it's and when his friend Leon goes and talks to him, it, it's cool, too. They use a lot of same shots from the first episode. From the first episode and oh, they, like, nice. call back to all that. So it's like, first episode, they, like, young, walking down the street doing And then the last episode, it's that. And it's just kind of the same idea. It's like... You're about to make me watch it, Maestro. Well, I'm, I'm letting you know. I'm, I think I'm cutting this I'm on today. You, it's one of my favorite shows. All right, bet. It's I'm going to watch it. Shows. All right. Like, I, I will tell you. Big now, ups to Jeffrey Maya. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Big Shout ups to out. Jeffrey Maya. I got to have her on here, too. Duh. Jeez, yeah. yeah. She, she did an incredible job on that, too. And that's the other thing. I think there's you. There's a lot of just great black acting mm-hmm. in the show mm-hmm. overall. Like That's why I can never be mad at it. Also, let's be real. You could also compare it to The Wire for not getting any awards. You see how that works? You put a great black cast in a whole situ- and Where does that go? It just shows you, you know, go- calling back to what you said earlier, where you're like, you know, it's changed. You know, it's changed where it's changed. It's changed where it's profitable. And then they have their years where they... Yeah, because why didn't they get anything? I, I mean, like, 
I have heard people say that word snowfall for almost like five years straight. You know, like the, you know what I mean. The I've, problem is though, I've heard it. I've heard, heard like, it. How did they not get and it? And I've heard it, but we've heard it because we're in black circles. Right. If right. you are not in black circles, unfortunately, yeah. And, and, and I really mean this. Unfortunately, yeah, you don't really know what the show. They don't is. really know yeah. what the show is, but. I was I was telling my boy Malcolm he was on the show too. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, but I'm like, what is it? It's one it's one white guy. It's Teddy. It's the, who's like the lead character CIA guy, bro. That's pretty much oh, it. So it is a black show. It, oh, it's bro. It's a black show through and <laughs> fucking through. Like it's yeah. great, but it's legit. Like there's one white. Okay, it's Teddy, and then there's this guy who comes in and he checks on Teddy, and you know there's been like trickles throughout but like nah bro mm-hmm. it's all black people and hispanics mm. and that's the show. And well, that, i kind of love it though oh, oh you love it yeah. that's what i'm saying but yeah. once again that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay i see why the awards haven't quite noticed you yet you know but it's it's and it's i feel like the show is only gonna grow but it's over now. No, but I'm saying like as far as like oh the, no it's gonna hit it's gonna have a wire yeah it's gonna it's gonna, it's gonna, gonna become hit that second bigger half. when it's and at least they have more clips and more things. Like you also got to remember, it's our our uh, as audiences mm-hmm. because of phones and because of all these other things. Our like you said, our attention, our attention span has changed. So it's the same way. And I didn't realize this when I was younger, but the same way. Did your mom or your dad ever be like, "Hey, you want to watch this movie?" And you're like, "This is old." Maybe. Yeah, like back in the day, you know. Yeah. My mom, she would always be like trying to turn. Oh, I used to watch this and be some black and white. And be like mm-hmm. this old, mm-hmm. like this, uh, this like. But I realized as I got older and started studying, it's just it moves slower because it's moving slower in a pace where it's like, nigga, you ain't got nothing else to do. We're gonna tell this story like this. Snowfall, I feel like, is the perfect balance of good storytelling, but also we can still keep you engaged, and it never gets too. Like, over the top. Come on, niggas. Like, it's not a soap. There you go. Cause it's not too soapy. I won't name it. But them. it's juicy. Yeah, we ain't got to. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> yeah, you be watching certain shows yeah, and you yeah, be yeah. like, Bruh. It's like the music's like, nah, nah. And, and not only that, it's like, <laughs> this shit's supposed to be based on a true story. And y'all niggas are sensationalizing mm-hmm. the fucking like, no, let's like mm-hmm. keep some things grounded. Mm-hmm. I get we got to have the thing mm-hmm. for next week. Mm-hmm. I get that. Mm-hmm. But there's a way to do mm-hmm. that without. You know, yeah, it's um, setting it up. It yeah, those characters. <laughs> so wait, so when did you start writing? What got the writing going? Well, it was probably when I was super unemployed. Um, because you also were doing styling as well, right? Yeah, man. Um, and you're very good at it too. I, I will get you're very good at it. Thank man. you, bro. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. I really love clothes. Hopefully, someday there's something I could do with that. Um, a little more, but uh, um. After The Wire, of course, I was just you know doing indie films here, there. Still not mm-hmm. enough to just be like you know everything out here in these streets <laughs> but yeah so i i just kind of picked up styling one of my friends is a very influential stylist big ups to ugo um i had a chance to really work behind the scenes in a different capacity mm-hmm. and work with some of the biggest stars and music really just kind of seeing the creative and the design and how those pieces really come together and all the while I've, i mean i've always liked kind of just writing little stories on my laptop even during the wire days, like, you know, it would be horrible. They'd be awful. You doing they would suck. But um, I was always kind of doing it. But it was really around the pandemic when I really gave it my all. Right. When I gave it my all. I had been doing it for years up to like Bibles and series and pilots and stuff. Yeah. But around the pandemic was when I was just like, I was giving it my all unapologetic. I was a writer. I woke up a writer. I went to sleep a I writer. Think. I was a you writer. You had the time. Yeah. You had the time. And you built a skill, respect for that. Because so yeah. many people, I was talking about this earlier, like, so many people didn't do that during that time. They yeah. kind of fucked that time off or they partied a lot mm-hmm. or they did, you know, because it was a, a, for me, it was a real turndown time. Yeah. And all I did was make music, get more creative, do, like you did. Um, but I do know also, like, there was lit shit going on quietly, privately, secretly, whatever mm-hmm. the fuck. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> so many people got <clears throat> lost in that sauce. I saw you at one, maybe two, through the whole, whole pandemic. pandemic. Bro. <laughs> oh, yeah, right, because we did the one, and then the, uh, yeah, the, yeah. The Halloween the drink, and then I saw you at one more, I remember, at Kwame's house, Kwame's the house. party. That's, okay, and... so what was the other one? 
Um, Kwame's house and there was, was Paris Global had that Halloween party. You remember? Oh yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, that was yeah, that was that was actually yeah, fun. That was lit. that was actually that was, was lit. <laughs> that was good. That was actually really good. But yeah, man. But I was like, y'all staying staying in, man, because there was there was other things to get to. Mm-hmm. Like you know, there was other avenues. You did explore. it right. You did it right. Thanks, man. You did it right. You did what you were supposed to do. You locked in. Thank you. You locked man. in. Thank you. I just, I'm, you got you got to keep this shit going. You bro. locked it's, in. It's, you locked it, in. You did it right for sure. It, and and I and you know I I want to find a way to create my own my own shit. So I'm not beholden to any. I don't I don't want to sit anywhere ever and be like ah I don't know if I can say this. I don't I don't want to. Right. I just want to do I, you know. Well, me as a television writer, I have oh, to. Oh, I know, um, <laughs> I, I, I get it, but that's all I'm saying. It's different games. It's different I'm like, games. yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's and I respect. It. Listen, yeah, I for respect sure. That, of I know course, bro. No, 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 no. Yeah. It's just different. But um, even even still, someday I'm a I'm a TV writer now. But someday I'll have my own production company where I can make the movies I want to make and write the scripts I want right. to say with the characters and they talking however they want to exactly. write. Exactly. And y'all gonna trust me to do it my way. Yeah. You know. So and then you can. You know, then you can just hire, you know, your friend who said, like, fuck everybody on that uh, network television yeah. set that one day. It's so authentic, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's no, so we gotta, raw. So I was thinking maestro for this, everybody in the room. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we're going to be able to green light this. With <laughs> Why not? Look at the resume. Bro, I'm hoping at that point it'll be one of those things. I hope you're calling up. You'll be like, hey, man, you want to do it? Fuck that. I want to do it. Oh, for sure. But no, it's just because I have so much other shit going on that's making bread. I feel like... I would still do it, though. You are the type that'll be like, yo, hey, what's up, Maestro? What's up, man? What's going on? Yo, I got this movie idea. Man, fuck that. I don't want to do no movie. We talk about something. You'd be like, so what's that movie idea about? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I'll call you back in like two months and be like, hey, man, you know, I was was talking to this guy. You know, I just kind of... Man, I saw this shit. You know what makes me... I'll be real with you. You know what makes me... (laughs) It's sad because I'm just like... I always ask people, and I need to ask you this. Yeah. But I'll ask after. I, watching some shit will make me want to act again. Like, that's what makes me want to be like, whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. No, I want to be on something. But it's like, half the shit, I'm going to just be transparent. Half the shit I get caught I'm not inspired. In, I don't even want to fuck inspired. inspired. This shit is ass. I don't really want to do it. There'll be a few things that'll come down here and there, and I'll that be That I'm like, excited Damn, about. That would have been cool. Or like, but the amount of times I say, Damn, I read for that and that that would have been cool and I don't get it. I'm gonna just be real with you. It's probably once one, a year. Thank you. Once a year. It's literally once a year. Once a year. And once a year, I'm like, oh. maybe twice. But I'm gonna be real with you for me. That <laughs> second one usually be some shit. It'd be like, you ain't wanted this shit. You just want you that bad. Yeah, shit. you wanted the bad. You know bag. what I mean? Like, you wanted to be able to be like, oh no, nah, like life has changed. But in theory, it, okay, I put it this way. <laughs> I, sometimes I read auditions and I'm like, what, what were you going to say? What were you gonna say? Pretty much I auditioned for the Michael Jackson movie, right? To play Michael Jackson. <laughs> oh, shit. Right? Because, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. but like, you know, maybe shit. But like, and I did good and I got a call back and it was cool. But of course they chose the right person for that. Like, in no way could I even sit here and say that I should have played that over Jafar Jackson. He was born to play Oh, is that the role. one who did it on the, on the, the play? Oh. That's Miles... From Maryland, amen. From PG County. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's okay. from PG County as well. But um, so wait, who's the guy who did it? Who, well, his nephew, Michael's nephew, Jermaine Jackson's son. What? Jermaine Jackson's son is playing Michael Jackson in the biopic, and you can't tell me it's, it's bad casting. He looks just like him, sounds just like him, built just like him. I mean, the nigga got home movies. What you talking about, he, bro? Nah, see that. You got to remember though the the amount of. Content this nigga had. Who Michael? No, no, no. Well, <laughs> his name's Jafar. Yeah. Imagine Jafar being like, ah, "Let me study up for this role, Dad." <laughs> nigga, the whole video. <laughs> oh, whole he got the, bro. If Michael Jackson, <laughs> if Mike always sounded like this, but then like when he was around his friends, kind of was like, "Yeah, nigga, blah blah." If he was that guy, I'm just gonna be real with you though. Jafar got those videos yeah, too. Yeah. So that nigga has it all. Yeah. Like you could never do a better yeah. audition than the nigga who got the Michael Jackson. It's like no. in his blood. It's literally, literally. But that was the only thing. It is his blood. It's not even in his blood. It, it is, is his, his blood. blood. Literally. That's crazy. That was the only thing that I said, oh damn, I would have liked to play Michael Jackson. Well, fucking obviously. Uh, duh. But but it's nigga, like I didn't even know about it. I, I wanted to play Michael but, Jackson. But you know what I mean? But I still want to play Jermaine though. Jackson? Yeah. Oh, what's, is he going to get a movie? Well, he's in the biopic. 
Boy, I know he's saying it. But that's, I want to be the nigga. Oh, you want, oh, yeah, I see shit. You yeah. want to be Jermaine, the brother Jermaine. Okay. In the Michael biopic, my name is Jermaine, damn it. I, I know. I, I got it. this big ass nose for a reason. <laughs> so, uh, you know, but that was the only time that, like, that was something that I really got excited for. I mean, they made, you know, we had to do the, um, the, the beaded dance you know what i mean right, so it's like right. i studied i got you know it's something i was like yeah i want to do this mm -hmm. and when i'm reading uh these breakdowns man it just be like this this or this oh, okay no i know I no know. It's not, that's <laughs> what, literally why we like you gotta forge your own path because it's i'm i'm tired of going into these situations Knowing how talented I am, yeah, and mm -hmm. if I just were to create my own thing, you'd come to me, mm -hmm. and I see them do it with people all the time. Mm -hmm. Be somebody who's like not polished, mm -hmm. done nothing, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. but they're popping over here. Mm -hmm. So we're, worst case scenario, we mm -hmm. gotta throw you in here somewhere, in and this they'll place. give you your own show, bro. They'll give not only will they give you your own show, you know what they'll do? They'll pay you more than they'll pay somebody who's just a vet actor like us not only will they pay you more nigga there's certain deal points you'll they'll try to put your ass in a honey wagon and then they'll get this nigga a whole trailer because mm -hmm. they're like oh well, i mean they got three million mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is crazy but that's what it is so my thought process is i'm gonna be real with you i feel like it's probably easier for myself to it's probably easier to figure out how to get 50 million motherfuckers to care about maestro than it is to get Every studio exec to care about Maestro. For sure. Shit. By the time I get to 10, I'll have one of them. You feel me? Like, and that just to me makes By more sense. By the time you get to 10, you'll have all of them. You'll be on some's radar, though. Like, dude, you're, you're, that's so real, man. And honestly, <clears throat> That's where I'm at. That's where I was. And I think that's kind of how I got into the position I'm in, man. Like, yeah. As I, as I grew older. It into a TV show. Yeah. Well, 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 not even, but like, you know, b being able to work with Kiki, you know what I'm saying? Someone that I've known since I was really young. Mm -hmm. And we just, as two people in the biz, kind of wanted to see what we were doing creatively. And we kind of got together, started spitballing and blah, 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 blah. And it kind of turned into something. I didn't really have to go to the yeah. studios until it was time to sell the show because she, but also because she got that oh i mean she got but she got that draw too because she built so much on her own we have to just kind of almost pretend like she's not like an international superstar for 10 seconds you know what i mean yeah obviously she has one of the greatest careers we've seen as far, far as a child star like as a black child star by far one of the best like Regina King. You know what I yeah. mean? Like from boop, 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 doo, 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 yeah. like it's just mm -hmm. it's just like that. So um honored to, and blessed to be working alongside of her, but I'm glad that I get to work with someone that look like me, talk like yeah. me, rock like me, get me, understand me. This is that, this is that, ba 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 ba. Know how to play it. I get to create with my own people and it's very fun. That's the coolest and most exciting part. But like you said, we are doing our own thing. Yeah. We're doing our own thing. Yeah. You know? And so explain explain what that is. So uh, we are developing a series with HBO, with Max. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like you're talking about one nigga. Yeah, so me and Max. <laughs> so we're developing a show with Max, formerly HBO Max. Mm. It's called The Unfriendly Black Hotties. Hold up. I, you know what? It's, 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 it's still going. Oh, for sure. Okay. So start, restart that because I'm just going to cut it there. So... um. Kiki and I are developing a series with Max, which is formerly HBO Max, called The Unfriendly Black Hotties. Uh -huh. And it is about how Gen Z weaponizes political correctness. Mm. And it's told through the eyes of these four girls in high school. And it really, um, it's an interesting ride. They're very dynamic characters. And we're just going to, um, it's the show you want to see us make. Right. Right. It's the show you are wanting to see us make. Mm -hmm. And we are really um, under the amazing leadership of Amy Aniobi from Insecure. Oh, wow. Two dope queens. Amy's like just, she's so good. You know, under her amazing leadership, um, we're getting to really grow 
and exercise these muscles, man. You know, Kiki's lived a lot of life and oh, I've yeah. lived a lot of life and we've got a lot of stories to tell. And our, our point of view is so, you know, interesting. So, um, you know, we're really getting to say all the things that we want to say and, That's you know, dope. do it our way for the most part. You know, no, we're yeah. still new. We got a lot to prove, but we're having a, a, a great time kind of just creating and developing our vision and, um, oh, yeah, you know, man. taking a step by step. So. Taking shit into your own hands. It's really exciting, That's man. That's all you can do, man. It's really That's exciting. You... Yeah, man. Look, man, I'm proud of you. Thank you, my show. I'm keep, proud of you, too. Keep up, the, keep up the great work. Thank you, Congratulations bro. Congratulations on the show. My brother. Man, thank you for coming by. I love this guy, man. I'm going to just say that. <laughs> I, I love this guy. Maestro Harrell is one of the most talented people I know. Thank you. And um, you keep doing your thing. I'm going to give you your flowers. I appreciate I'm gonna that. I'm going to give man. you your flowers because you deserve them, man. You, you are an OG in this game. Even before I started acting, <laughs> this nigga had his own TV show. So before I was on the wire, you know what I'm saying? This nigga had his own TV show. Hey, man, we just it's to crazy. Keep the ball but, but who was on the TV show with you? Someone played your brother. Chris Hardwick and Bumper Robinson. He was in the Michael Jackson story, too. Oh, yeah, he was, obviously. Who did he, did he play? He played the brother. He played Jackie or Jermaine, one of them. Either I'm Jackie just saying, or Jermaine. Did he play Jermaine? Full circle. That's kind right? of full crazy. Circle, full circle. Hey, man, but yeah, no, nah, man. Keep up the great work. Thanks, Thanks bro. Thanks for coming by. Hey, man, peace. And we out. Peace. Peace.